All right, um, here is our little setup. We have an air core primary, and we have a secondary wrapped around that primary, which is a little uh, skinny wise you see there. The primary being the thick ones. Um, the secondary is going to these two pins here, and we will be putting a resistive load across our secondary. And our primary will be driven by the function generator. Uh, and we'll have a CBR on the input of that primary so we can watch what the current does um, in regards to the secondary and when we change the inductance of our coil by inserting different objects into it. Um, at the moment the inductance of our air core primary is um, 52.7.8 millihenries um, but we will be using our oscillating magnet later on and that will be at its closest point sitting around about there um, and we can see it's raised at about uh, two, two odd millihenries which is not very much because if we take this uh, tiny little screw here and we sit that in the core like so we have raised in the uh, inductance of that coil more so than what our big flat magnet did sitting along the outside of it. This is just things we need to know for this test. If we take this big block, which we will also be using in the test, and we place that inside our coil like so, the inductance has now gone right up to 156.8 millihenries. So they're numbers to remember. Um, and that is to uh, just show how little effect this magnet and our steel plate has on the inductance of the coil. Um, so a little more about this test. Our primary, like I said, will be driven by the function generator um, at the resonant frequency of this oscillating magnet and bar when that is bolted in position and that will be the frequency we use throughout the test in case you're wondering why that frequency so what we want to look at is the effect that the oscillating magnet has on both the primary current and the um, dissipating energy from the second coil which will be across our uh, 5 ohm of resistance in this case and um, we can get an idea as to what might be happening in this situation or what is doing work and where and why so our primary coil um, not only will be of course driving the uh, secondary coil and um, being the means of the dissipated power across our resistor of that secondary but later on in the test it will also be driving the uh, oscillating magnet so the primary's energy is going to be shared between the two so we would expect to see a reduction um, of output energy from our secondary or an increase um, of primary current when we uh, have to drive a secondary system with that primary that being our oscillating magnet and uh, steel flappy bar there so we've got an idea of how much um, our little oscillator is going to change um, the inductance of that coil which is very very little it is less than this little screw inserted into the core um, and we also know can raise the inductance quite a bit with this big um, laminated block. So we're going to hook everything up to the scope and we're going to measure the uh, current flowing into the coil with the scope and the voltage across our um, resistor which is across our secondary will also be measured with the scope so we can calculate our power being dissipated by the secondary and um, the current being consumed by the primary our voltage um, of course will be set to an RMS value through the function generator 
So uh, that's about it for this part. We just needed to uh, have a look at um, inductance changes within the coil uh, with the various parts we're going to be looking at throughout the test. So the first part of the test we will get some numbers um, simply by the air core itself then we'll insert our little screw in which is a little just a bit uh, raises the inductance a little more than our uh, magnet does and then we'll insert this into the core lift the inductance right up and we'll also check the current flowing through L1 and the dissipated power across the resistor on L2 so I'll go ahead get it all set up get all the um, frequency set up and uh, We'll be back very shortly. Okay, so the first half of our experiment is up and running. Uh, we are set on 5 ohms as our uh, dissipating resistor, which is across the secondary. Uh, we have a 3 ohm resistor measuring the current on the primary. Um, at the moment, we are simply in an air core state, and um, we can now look at our. Uh, waveform so the blue channel on a blue waveform is showing the current to the primary um, and that is over our 3 ohm resistor so the voltage drop across the 3 ohm resistor 136 millivolts um, and we have 30 millivolts RMS across our 5 ohm resistor on the um, output you can also see that we are extremely close to a 90 degree phase differential between the two. Okay, so what we're first going to do is we're going to place this little screw in here which brought the inductance up as we've seen at the start. Um, and by the way, you guys can keep track of all these measurements. I'm not going to be writing them down as I'm going. Um, I'm going to just concentrate on doing the filming and the test. So, um, as we've seen in our inductance test, we're simply going to place that screw in there like we did. And as you can see, very little change, if any, to anything in that uh, coil as far as the input current and dissipated power and the output goes. Okay, so um, now we remove our screw, we'll chuck our big block in there which um, brought our inductance right up. We can now look and we can see that our dissipated energy across our um, dissipating resistor on the uh, secondary coil has gone up. We are indeed dissipating uh, more power across that resistor. But if we look at our um, voltage drop across our CVR on channel 2 there, we're now at 132 millivolts. If I remove that big block, it goes up to 136. So, um, by having that big block in there, we've um, increased the inductance of that coil by about three times. Um, and we've only managed to drop our input current down four odd uh, millivolts over our CVR and um, we have of course raised our voltage across our dissipating resistor up to 86 so it was only as you can see 30 millivolts RMS across the 5 ohm resistor on the output without the core with that very big, very big core, it lifted it to 86 and slightly reduced our current flow in. Um, our phase angle remains pretty much the same. Okay, so now we know what um, that uh, very big increase of inductance does and how much this little tiny increase didn't do. We can now move on to the uh, second part of the test and add our oscillating magnet um, which once again the energy to drive that will be coming from the primary coil of course 
I mean the way of the magnetic field attracting and opposing that magnet on our oscillator bar so uh, like I said you guys keep track of the measurements and what you're seeing I'll keep uh, going through with the experiment doing the filming trying to keep the camera in the correct location so um, now we'll uh, get on with the uh, second part of the test once more that is without the core and that is with the large core without the core all right on with the second and the last part of our test okay so for the last part of our test we have our uh, little wobbly bar there oscillating bar and magnets fixed in position of course it will get closer and further away but the polarity of the magnet will not change only the polarity of the magnetic field produced by the coil will change so it's going to be a push-pull um, situation on this causing it to oscillate so uh, once again keep an eye on the numbers that we're looking at uh, we're still set at our um, 5 ohms of resistance across our output coil um, still have our 3 ohm CVR in there nothing has changed other than the fact that we have put this now in play so this is going to be an oscillating magnet so we're going to see the magnetic field um, oppose the field being produced by the coil in one half of the phase and then in the other half of the phase um, we're going to see the two opposite fields and the magnet will be drawn to the coil then we all have to work out what is going on um, in regards to current flow through the primary and the um, current flowing out of the secondary or the power should I say flowing from the secondary being dissipated across our uh, 5 ohm resistor so I'll click it up and we're going to stop this from oscillating just with our finger we're going to have a look at the waveform and the measurements so on channel 1 we have 32 millivolts RMS across our um, dissipation resistor on the um, secondary coil and on channel 2 we have 136 millivolts RMS across our 3 ohm resistor well, the voltage drop across our 3 ohm resistor is 136 millivolts you can see that um, the current on the primary is 90 degrees out of phase with our secondary which is normal ok so now we're just going to uh, let this go our um, primary is now doing more work in that it has to oscillate this coil and if you listen carefully you can hear the whole bench is vibrating uh, my mess up there is all wobbling around so the primary is now dissipating energy through this um, very large U-bit IKEA bench uh, which weighs about 200 kilos and probably even more that the drawers are full now and there's junk everywhere um, but still enough energy being dissipated from L2 uh, L1 our primary coil uh, through our oscillating magnet and bar into the bench to cause vibrations and sound um, so now we're going to have a look again at what we have you can now see across our 5 ohm resistor on the um, secondary coil we have 122 millivolts and our voltage drop across our 3 ohm CVR on the primary coil is now only 112 millivolts you'll also notice now the waveforms are 180 degrees out of phase with each other so we've decreased our power into input to the primary we have increased the power output from our secondary 
and we are also dissipating power through the bench in the way of vibrations um, and all we have done is added an oscillating um, permanent magnetic field Once again if we stop that we are no longer dissipating energy through the bench the vibrations have stopped our output on our secondary um, has also dropped across our dissipating resistor our input current has now gone up and our waveform the two waveforms are now only 90 degrees out of phase with each other so I'll let the old magnet go now simply by adding our oscillating magnet um, has enabled us to not only dissipate more power on our output coil dissipate energy through vibrations in this very large bench um, it has also allowed us to decrease the input current and chase, change the phase angle by another 90 degrees between the uh, two coils. So very interesting. Uh, I am not quite sure what is going on. Obviously it isn't the inductance that is making the change because we um, tried that previous to this part of the experiment and we didn't see what we are seeing now. Um, you may have to look a little at impedance but um, no matter how you look at it the energy to oscillate that magnet is coming from the primary and it would seem that somehow the energy is being amplified returned back to the system I mean that we can now have more power to burn off through our secondary we also have um, power being dissipated through the bench in vibrations as I said and at the very same time we've actually reduced the energy so everything is um, asked about to what you would think it would be. Alright, um, I'll get this all put together and uh, get it posted. Leave your thoughts in the comments, whatever. Um, and thanks for watching guys. See you next experiment.